so much fun. Doing all of these things is just so enjoyable. There's so much satisfaction in learning each one of these different techniques because it really does make a massive difference. Hey guys, it's Kobe McCool. Welcome back to another episode of Tuesday Tunes. Thanks for coming to check out the video. In today's episode, I want to break down a lo-fi beat that I made just earlier today, and I'm really happy with lots of the little things that I discovered along the way that really takes the beat that little step closer to lo-fi perfection. I'm going to make some videos in the future breaking down individual elements of lo-fi, like how to make lo-fi pianos sound better, how to make lo-fi drums more effective. But in this episode, I'm just going to give a broad overview and maybe show some of the little tricks that I found along the way that are really handy. I'm working in an FL studio, but lots of these techniques will be perfectly applicable in any DAW. You've heard it playing in the background of the video already, but here's a small snippet just to give you an idea. So let's break it down best place to start with this is the piano because funnily enough that's where I started. As I say I'll make videos in the future going into more depth about these elements because there's actually a lot going on with this piano and there's a lot going on with the whole beat and although the overall sound is very simple it's the subtle production techniques and distinctions that gel it all together and somehow give it a high quality feel even though it's lo-fi. <laughs> so here's the MIDI for the piano I just plugged this in with the Spitfire Labs piano which is free. And this is completely dry with no effects on it. This is just what it sounds like from the plugin. When I go into more detail about lo-fi pianos, I'll explain more about how to arrange chords and how to use the MIDI so that it sounds more real. It is possible to make stock piano sounds sound considerably better, especially with lo-fi techniques, but the more rich your piano sound is to begin with, the better. After having my chord progression with the piano, I exported that into a WAV file here and then reversed the WAV file and cut the chords up. So the chord that just played would then reverse back up and lead into the next chord. It can be quite fiddly, but I'll explain this technique in more depth in a lo-fi piano video. But it gives it this luscious swell leading into each and next chord. I then took that a step further and put a pan on the reverse sounds, not on the main piano, because I wanted the main piano to stay in the middle, but on the reverse sounds so that they were sliding about. And that pan adds this really lovely fluttering effect to the piano, but it doesn't dictate the sound because it's just on the reverse sounds that that's happening. But then I also added an automation to that pan amount because I didn't want it to be panning really intensely the whole time. And in other areas, I wanted it to pan a lot. For example, this bit here, I wanted it to rise up quite a lot and get quite fast. So this automation clip is affecting how fast the panning from side to side goes. So there it's more gentle, whereas here it's faster and slightly more aggressive. And it's a really lovely technique. Then I went another step and I took a gross beat. It basically just makes the tempo slide down at the end and it gives, the, it, gives it that record sliding effect. But again, I, I wanted to automate it because it was a bit too much if it did it at the end of every single part of the piano. So it's quite intense there because I've got it turned up full, whereas in other sections I don't have it on at all. And again, it was really lovely, but what I then did one other step further, and this is a very subtle, but it's a really lovely effect, was to then print out the piano with those slides on it and reverse them. And the sound of a piano sliding and reversing is really lovely.
that's the main explanation for what I did with the piano, but in the future, I'll break those techniques down so that you guys can actually use them as well. And that went really well with the sub. And this is one of the main things that I always tend to do with the piano is remove some of the bass frequencies from the piano and let the sub do that job instead. And I just think it provides this luscious, thick sound. To finish off the piano, I also sent it to a separate effects end where I put on some Valhalla Supermassive effects. And this is a free plugin, I'll put it in the description. It's really cool, it's awesome fun to play around with. Instead of it just being the same old reverb and delay, this one just gives a little bit more creativeness to the sound. So I'll, I'll isolate it so you can hear what the piano sounds like when it's just the reverbs on its own. So it's kind of a combination of reverb and delay. But it's very luscious and I really enjoyed it. And it's quite simple because that plugin takes care of all of it. It takes a bit of fiddling about with because it can get quite wild. <laughs> So you've got to try and dial it in, otherwise it can be overpowering. And the reason I spent so much time and effort on the piano is just because it's one of the most essential parts of a lo-fi beat. The melody line, the, sa the main sound or sample that you go with, is what can often make or break the quality of a lo-fi beat. So I then have the piano and the sub playing together really nicely like that. And then obviously the next place that I went to were the drums. I just went for a really basic but quite heavy kick. And I wanted to swing the drums and give it that classic sort of hip hop lo-fi head nod. So the kick and the snare are very simple. They don't really do all that much. The actual power comes from the hi-hats, especially with this style of the production. Although the hats are very light and delicate, they are really important to providing that rhythmic element because the only thing the kick and snare do are provide the solid bass. That's it. There isn't really anything massively complicated about what they do. The only significant thing that I did do with the snare, just to add a little bit more interest to it, although you probably won't notice that this is what the snare is doing, it still adds this quality to the sound and spaciousness to it, but it's subtle. You can see I've also automated it up so that it doesn't do it all the time, because again, if it was doing it all the time, it would be overpowering. But in these particular sections, the effects that it has are a delay, a reverb, a pan, a chorus, some compression, and then also like a distortion plugin. And so if I turned it right up, it sounds absolutely ridiculous. But when you turn it down and just let it be there and let it be subtle, it's actually a really nice effect. I turn the snare off and just play this effect on its own, but turn it right up. So the delay is generating it playing over and over again. The reverb is giving it space. The pan is pushing it from side to side and the chorus is creating other layers so that it's got even more sonic texture. The OTT or the compressor is just gluing the sound together and then the hardcore is just adding a little bit more distortion so that it sounds even more tasteful. And it's probably totally overkill, but it was really fun to make and I actually really enjoy how it shapes the feel of the snare. The automation was really important though because like I say if I had this on full the whole time it would just crowd everything out. So at the beginning when the main beat comes in you don't even hear it. Then onto the hats. I had three different styles of hats. One very basic offbeat hat. And the only thing that I changed within the hats was just the pitch and the velocity, just that they're not too full on. So some are slightly louder or quieter, and then I pitched some down and some up. And again, it just adds this slightly different interest. And it's the subtleties that make this whole thing. Then I have this other hat loop here, which is more of like a real drum kit type vibe. And I just cut this, it was from a sample, uh, just a sample loop originally, and I just cut this up and spaced it out so that it fit that swung rhythm that I was going for. Then the final hat pattern that I had was one other one here, just adds a different rhythmic texture.
And again, it's very subtle. It just adds a little bit more zest to the whole sound. Then to finish off the drums, the only other things that I added were just some folly. Just some crisp high-end sounds that really tickle your <laughs> that really tickle your ears and also add some other rhythmic qualities to the beat. They're not that commanding, but they really do add more texture and character to the sound. But those are all of the essential sounds. There's the main sound, the sub, and the drums. The only other thing that I added, which again adds even more character and shape to the sound, are some sound effects. So I have the classic vinyl sound, and I also have this pluck sound, which actually came from Omnisphere. But I also have it sent to some reverb just to give a bit more spaciousness. And then I have this rain stick thing, which is a really lovely sound. And <laughs> I've called it rain tickle because that's exactly what it does. It kind of tickles your ears and it's really lovely. And then I have this little faller thing here. And again, it's subtle, but when you notice it, it just, I don't know, it just does something to you. It's delicate, but that's exactly what you're going for. The other thing that works so well with adding these kind of light sounds is that it makes the drums seem even more heavy and tight and the, the bass even thicker, just having them there because you've got that lovely contrast between your high end and your low end. Then finally, one of the only other significant things that I did was just added some modulation. So I had it in one original key at the very beginning. And then I just have it modulating up here. It's just a bit lighter, brighter and flowier. It's so much fun. Doing all of these things is just so enjoyable. There's so much satisfaction in learning each one of these different techniques because it really does make a massive difference. Now, if you've seen all my other videos, you know there are plenty of other things that I would often do to a beat like this. I would probably add in some birds, I would add in some vocals, and I really would quite like to sing on this beat, but I just wanted to break the beat in itself down relatively simply before in the future, diving into more depth of individual elements. So I really hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you have any questions, please do just leave a comment or send me a message on Instagram. If you like the video, leave a like, all of those wonderful things. I really appreciate it. I'm really looking forward to sharing more with you guys about lo-fi and all sorts of other musical stuff. So I'll see you in the next one, but until then, bye.